Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop. Hey, last night I was a little bored, so I came in here for a while and stared at this thing and uh, made a couple observations, a few simple tests, and now I've got some interesting things to look into. So I'll just explain what they are. One of them is this capacitor here, which has been staring me in the face the whole time I've been looking at this radio. Look, this capacitor is on a funny angle. It doesn't quite look like the right kind of capacitor. And if you look closely, and I have, down here you can see that there's a lap solder connection on this lead from this capacitor. This is actually a replacement capacitor. So that kind of floored me when I realized that, because that means somebody's been in here working on this thing. As far as I've seen and everything I've looked at, only this and some fiddling on these uh, wire terminals, uh, soldering and resoldering the wires. The only thing I can see that somebody's done. There could be more in here too. So there's one thing there could be more. So my intention is to replace this. Just going to put in a new one. It's a point. It's a point one. It's the filter on the 160 volt uh, supply for certain tubes. So 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 that's that. Number two, I finally took a closer look at this cooked up part here. I noticed when I had the radio turned upside down, uh, the similar part on the other output transformer was a nice green resistor. It looked really nice. Didn't look anything like this, that's for sure. I put my ohm meter on it. Let's repeat this. Let's repeat it. I also found this on the schematic. This should be, if I remember right, 4700. If it's not 4,700, it's really close to 4,700. So I'm on the 20,000 ohm scale. Go right across it. And it doesn't matter how much I sit here and do this, I'm going to see a zero on that meter. Or a, uh, not a zero, <laughs> open. This guy's burned open. So. That might explain why this capacitor has the look it has. There's stuff coming out the ends of it here. I mean, this looks like this thing got cooked up and stuff oozed out of it. I mean, that's really what it looks like. I don't see any other capacitors that look like that. This is just, this can't be normal. It's got a fairly typical capacitor size on it, 0 0.01. But this is a thousand volt rated capacitor. So is this guy. He's a thousand volt rated capacitor. This resistor is probably rated a thousand volts too, although we don't usually think about voltage ratings on resistors. But if you tried to drop, you know, for an example, 20,000 volts across this resistor, I think the electricity would just travel over the surface of it. It would just leak over the surface of it. In fact, it would probably go <laughs> pretty quick. 20,000 volts, a bit extreme as an example, but so a thousand volts here to the chassis up to a thousand volts. Doesn't mean there's always a thousand there. So, you know, I have pretty good capacitors, uh, you know, like this. Now the rating on it is 600, 630. How much you want to bet you can put this in where it says a thousand and there's really no problem at all. These are probably good for a lot higher, but I don't know. And then along with staring at this and this, I can't help but stare at this capacitor and a few others like it where the end has kind of lifted off the capacitor. So it may just physically looks like one that should be changed. So I started thinking, you know, maybe there's a number of easy to change parts in here that might be worth doing. Obviously, one, two, three, <laughs> and maybe that. Uh, beyond that, it gets really tricky to work on this guy. Uh, so that, those are the things I found anyway that I want to pursue. And the last one is pretty sure when I took the tests on this tube, the voltage tests, I got some wonky results. So I was unclear in my head what I was doing while I was doing it. <laughs> often the uh, often the case. Once I get you know four four or five tests in a row, uh, things start getting a little juggled up in my head. So so I, I think it might be worth looking into this. Now the set runs quiet on short wave. Can any of these affect that? I don't think so. I think this is all on the output. Uh, the, the story has long been told about the signal coming through the radio by the time it gets here. <clears throat> so, and this would be affecting only one channel. And you might even wonder, well, how can you have a burned open resistor? And this thing even work? How can this even work? 
So let's jump on the schematic. We'll look at this resistor. We'll look at these capacitors. I'll try to make a judgment as to whether I can put 600 volt capacitors in there. And uh, so let's let's jump to the schematic here. So it took me a long time last night to trace that big white capacitor back. Uh, the capacitor size is 0.1. I don't know for sure it's the correct size that's been put in there. I didn't. Oh, I'm pretty sure it is now after looking at this. So dead center of the screen you might be picking up the point one that's sitting right there. But I spent an awful lot of time studying other parts of this schematic until I finally got my eye way over here. So I won't go into the long journey it was, but it was. So that's the one I'm thinking of changing on the 160 volt power source coming out of here. So I don't know that this is bad. All I know is somebody put one in and it looks like it came out of their jump box. That's what it looks like to me. So I'll put a nice shiny yellow one in there. Now if we go, uh, no, now I gotta change the schematic here, like that, and come down here. So this is a uh, two outputs here, one, one here and one down here. So we we'll pick one to look at and try to remember hard what I'm going to show you. So here's the output transformers here they are and a virtually identical circuitry coming back look 0.01 1000 this is the capacitor that's got goop coming out of it there's another 0.033 1000 and there's another one 0.0033 1000 there's three thousand volters in here and you see they're all on this line here so this is the part I I find it a little confusing. Okay, so 280 volts DC supplied. Okay, so I can understand the capacitor's got to withstand you know, 300 volts here. Where's the thousand come from? Some some kind of I don't know some some kind of uh, 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 resonant thing happening here, or I don't really know where the thousand comes from that they need to worry about. Uh, but nevertheless, they've obviously done it for a reason. Thousand volts. I'm going to flip the receiver over and we'll look at the same capacitors underneath and see if one of them is gooping out the same way or, or what's going on with them. So that raises another interesting question. Oh yeah, the resistor. First thing I got to show you the resistor. So here it is here. R43, 4700 ohms right here. Tied right between or tied where two of these thousand volt capacitors connect. As I said before, one of which is gooped out, this one out. So let's see, ground is found on the far side of this resistor. A short on this. Well you'd have this 220k resistor here. Hard to see if this shorts how that would pull a heavy current through this resistor and burn it. This one although, this one, this one shorted, you'd have the 280 volt supply dumped right on top of the 4700 ohm resistor. That would burn it. I think that would burn it. And the interesting thing is once it popped open everything went back to working again. Or so it seems. So you know the burned resistor here suggests this capacitor is shorted. That's how I would interpret this. See the power supply Two power supply. Two why why two wires here? They're hooked almost exactly the same place, just just off a little bit there. Twenty-eight ohms. Six hundred and ninety ohms. Uh so exactly what they're doing here I don't know, but they're you're doing something tricky, no doubt about it. So we'll jump back, we'll look we'll try to figure out if one of these is shorted. I did this last night and I stopped right at this point exactly here and thought, wow, this is all great this stuff to put on video. So let's, uh, so we'll look at the other ones and then we'll, well, let's test for the short first. Let's okay, so these are the two capacitors we we're looking at, the 2000 volters and with this resistor coming off to ground, ground terminal. So the, a good question would be, is, is this grounded here? Okay, watching on the meter. This is what I found yesterday, and I stopped at this point. Let's 
go way up. 20 megaohms. You see capacitor charging there. And ground is ground. this thing can burn is pulling power through here it's not hooked up to anything else it's got to get it through these capacitors and it's not okay so now it's burned open of course it's not hot anymore and it's not pulling this point down to ground as it would if it were shorted now it's not going to short what am I talking about Well, maybe I'm going to open these two capacitors here and we'll put a tester on them, see what we can find out. And, uh, cause I, and, and uh, can I put 630 volt? I bet you I can. Modern 630 volt capacitors. After all, this is like a 50 year old 1000 volt one. You think it's still good for 1000? I'm not good for 1000 anymore. Yeah, let's, let's pop those open. going to try to get them off this terminal. I'm just going to nip them and then my 90% towards replacing them already once they're nipped. Let's nip away here. I think I look at the other ones first. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hold the fort. <laughs> Take a quick look. Everybody ready for this? Okay, they're way up. They're way up. In underneath, underneath this, this can come off. This end piece can come off. We get a better look at them. You know what? There's goop coming out of one of them. Uh oh, uh oh, hold the fort. This one is degooping. focus this. So please bear with me just one moment here while I get the focus box on here. You say, Jim, why don't you get the focus box ready before you start the video? I often do, but not always. Okay, so here they are. Wait a minute. 400 Oh, what's that say? 1,400. Hmm. So it's got 1,000 volts DC or 400 AC is what it's saying there. I think sometimes they call the uh, that AC one the working voltage, I think. And that's the same size. Uh, you can see the 33 picofarad. Now, is the, goop, the goop is not pouring out of it. Uh, so it does not look like the other one. Just, just in case you forgot what the other one looks like, it looks like that. And it has to be, no, no, this is the one that goes to the grid, isn't it? This is the one that goes to ground. This is the one we would think. Does it go to ground? Yeah, this other one, this other one goes to this terminal here, which hooks up to this shielded wire. This is the wire, one of the two wires that goes to one of the two tweeters. So the tweeter power looks like it's getting getting there through this capacitor. Tweeter power. Replace it all. And don't sweat over it. And then while we're here with the close-up camera, what about that one? 
it's popping its top. You gotta kind of wonder if you look at that, what exactly has happened that would make that move outwards like that? Uh, you know, it's just sitting in a radio and nothing's happening in here, except it's warming up and cooling down a little bit. I think they've just repeated heating and cooling. By the way, what is it right near? It's right near this cooking hot tube here. So it looks like one side of that capacitor it looks like it got roasted. That's probably what happened to this guy. He just simply got heated up and uh, lost his head. He lost his head. What about all these other guys that are getting cooked out around here? This one down there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that looks rough. Looks like it's barfed its end out. Right, right down there on the floor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You know, that's the problem with looking at this stuff closely. You see things. You just as soon not see. Okay, to the problem at hand. I think it's quite, I don't think there's many options here. Now, what about this is a wire wound uh, resistor. Now, I'm gonna try to put a wire wound one back in here. Uh, you get the high um, thermal capacity. Uh, 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 uh. Let's continue on with the with the testing of the capacitors with them sitting in there and of course now I've started another project simultaneously with this one another console the work is coming at me left and right here um, so I'm going to be working on another console in parallel with this one so you're going to see another series, and I, I, who knows what's really going to happen, right? But I'm thinking what's going to happen is I'm going to start producing uh, videos on different topics. Uh, so you might even try to watch all three of them. Good luck on that. That's a lot of time. Maybe you want to pick one and watch one and not watch the others. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but uh, I've got more work coming at me than I know what to do with now. Okay, so I'm looking up the capacitor test leads here. Now that's a relatively small capacitor. and This is a long distance wire here to test it on, but I think we'll be okay. The first, the first test actually isn't even for capacitance. The first test is to check and see if it's leaky. Now a leaky capacitor leaking enough could burn that resistor out strikes me the capacitor would probably get hot in that process too and barf its guts out like the other one. Maybe I've got them mixed up a bit. So we want to be able to see the eye here. You can kind of see it's there's a, a wedge open down here or a dark wedge. There you can see it better like that. There. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it with 50 volts here. And we're going to watch that eye close and hopefully, well, we'll see what happens. Here we go. So the eye is closed and it's not opening one iota with 50 uh, volts on it. So that capacitor is absolutely shot. Shotta, shotta. I'm going to cut the other lead and bring it right out. And we will test it right out of this set. There's no way this test was bogus to begin with. He's on the second in here just a sec there we go okay I'll bring him right over here a little tiny guy well wow, it looks a little melted in there too yeah and all these uh, uh radios i've done and the thousands of capacitors i've seen I've, I've never seen one like burned or smoked up i have seen them blown open popped right open okay so same test 50 volts Hey, what happened? How, how did that happen? <laughs> how could that happen? You know how that happened? I probably have this shorted in there. Okay, let's keep going. It's only 50. This is supposed to be good for a thousand volts, man. Let's see. No. So now we're putting uh, 150 according to this. 150 volts on it. It's right around 150. 
And it's a leaky. It's a leaky guy, of course. Let's put 250 just for fun. Hold your hands back. Not opening at all. Surprise, it's bad. Um, it's leaky enough, probably the charge has gone in it already. My guess is every one of those capacitors would test, every one that, that style would test the same way. So I'm going to cut off the other guy, the 0.01, and, and here. Yeah, 1,400. This is a temperature compensating capacitor or something like that. I don't know. Wow. Well, it certainly did some compensating, didn't it? <laughs> is there such a thing? Yeah, I think there is. But I don't think this is one of them. 50 volts. Hey, what do you say to that? Okay, it opened on 50. Not much of a test. 150. Uh, no surprise there. She's a dud. So the, these will leak some amount of electricity. I think the resistance of these is still extremely high. It might change dramatically as they get warmed up. Uh, it could be you can get these guys warm and then they can convey enough electricity to smoke that resistor up. Just for fun. Here's the brand new big guy here. Just to, once in a while, it's good to it's good always good to check these things once in a while. Leakage at 250. Watch the eye now. Whoosh! Took a moment to charge it, and then it opened. 350. Oh yeah. 450. I should put gloves on at this point. Let's see. A good capacitor pop open at 450 volts of pressure on it. Anybody want to touch that now? <laughs> when this device, this testing device, when you let it relax back here to normal, when you're not doing the leakage test, it applies a short across the capacitor for you. So general rule of thumb, it's either this thumb or this one, I'm not sure. Discharge them with a dead short for roughly the length of time you charged it for. So if you had it on power for one minute, put a short on it for one minute. Rule of thumb. I should remove this one and while I got the tester going, let's test it too. Yeah, let's do that. There was a little bit of a hum in this set. This could have been someone's attempt to de-hum the radio. I left enough there. Yep. I get the other side here. Four hundred. It just doesn't have that looks like it just doesn't look like it was new when it was installed it looks to me like it came out of a junk box let's see what it does it's in great shape i'll bet you it tests just fine let us see and you're looking at to see if moisture can get into it look at the end seals this guy's sealed up really good look where the wire comes out yeah it looks really good here before we have a surprise let's put that back so if it tests the uh, leak test, then we will attempt to measure its capacitance. 25 volts. Huh, I <laughs> like that. So what we're discovering is that this capacitor is really bad. Look at that. It's not even, it, when it says 25, it's actually 50. I've measured it. This is a, an error. 50 on everybody's machine and we try this it just won't open so we can't measure the capacitance uh, with that kind of leakage in there we get a bogus reading so good thing I grabbed this and you know it just won't stop there <laughs> something like this we could keep going I'm sure 
we can keep going. And it, this one, it's popped its top, and not like it was, you know, wonderfully uh, hermetically sealed in the first place. But it, I think, by my analysis, it's popped its top because of it's been overheated. The overheating is going to wear the capacitor out. He says with a dramatic tone of voice. Last thing, let's nip this guy off and uh, test him. I mean, there's just no way it's going to come back to life because I've nipped it off. That's not happening. My meter is set way up on 20 mega ohms, so anything in this resistor, including my fingers, is going to work. That's my fingers. It's a zero. It's open. Forty seven hundred. Okay, I'm going to get the parts. I'm going to stick them in and figure out what to do next. sweep sweater on and sweat <laughs> working so hard I'm sweating holy smokes So I guess we can assume somebody somehow deduced that this capacitor I'm replacing, uh, the original one, had to be replaced. So, somehow they reached that conclusion. Yeah, mine's going to stick up a little funny too. Suspicious of that white capacitor the moment I saw it. Really, it was surprised to see that it was not original. So you know, if this was in in, in, in more uh, like a like new condition, that was a younger back in the day. Back in the day, if this stopped working, it probably was a single component failure. Back in the uh, earlier times. But by now, you know, it's got tired, tired bones everywhere. He's tired. I'm just so tired. Well, we're getting rid of some of those bad bones here. Now I gotta make a decision about the. Uh, to do here um, and not much of a decision I'll put in the appropriate sizes and use the capacitors I have and that'll be that just have to solder that and that and we've got this 
part done, I think I better do the same thing on the other side, on the other transformer. Because what's happened here is probably going to happen there. And probably the, the really poorly testing capacitors here probably test exactly the same on the other transformer. And so do all the rest of them in here. <laughs> That's the problem. You know, from a repair shop point of view, the best thing you can do in a situation like this is just get the thing working again and look for any obvious you know, parts that are really on the verge of failing. If you can do that, which is what I'm doing here, to do the wholesale, I guess if somebody's got enough money and they like that, generally it's a hobbyist who want to do the beautiful complete restoration on something like this, uh, you know, that's, that's a big project. fully restore one of these. And the fact is a fair number of capacitors can be bad and weak and all that kind of stuff and this thing can still work reasonably well. So we have the resistor in. I have to make, this is the uh, uh, wire lead that goes to one of the electrostatic speakers. So that'll have to be soldered on there later. I'm putting everything back together. This guy here looks like a short, looks like I really built in a short there. Really, really did it. Once I'm watching there. Ooh. Okay, that's okay. And It's just not an easy thing, like even changing this capacitor. It's tough down in there. You know, having to put the leads right through the board and everything. Wow. So maybe we'll leave it at that. And we'll look at the other side and consider the replacement of the others. Uh, how can I do this? Yikes. Hmm. To get it this easily, uh, okay, I gotta, I gotta figure something out here. Okay, I think that's gonna make it possible for me to get at these. It's just these two capacitors, the resistors, in great shape, so it didn't burn up. These guys didn't leak enough, something like that. These are the replacements, and you know, you might think they go like that. But they actually go like this. This is a 0.01, and this is a 0 0.003. Okay, I'll stick them in there. A lot of wires going together here.
dropped a little piece of wire. Where'd it go? I think it just fell to the bench. So I, the last couple of projects, I've seen previous people using lap connections. You know, they just lap, like put two wires like that and then solder them. There's so quite a bit of that in the last couple of things. The uh, white capacitor I took out of here had been soldered in that way. I don't like that myself. I prefer the, uh, the hooky, the hooky thing. I think I got it. Okay, so that takes care of these uh, these capacitors. Now I guess these are involved with the uh, tweeters. Uh, tweeter signal. Good. So so that's really it. I think it might be time to test this guy, considering all the stuff I've done here. Do that. Okay, I'll get them set up for a test. Actually, maybe the first thing to test are these capacitors I just took out. Here, let's do it with the short leads. So these things are rated 1,000 and 400. My guess is my capacitors are rated 400 and 1,500. That's my guess. They're just showing the uh, the lower rating. So I'm, I'm sure I'm fine with those. 50 volts. What do you do? Watch in the eye. Oh, hi! Look at that. Next one. That's better. So so these are actually better. exceptionally good though. I showed you what a brand new one would do. Now this is this is the guy. No, he hasn't barfed out at all, I don't think. Let's see. 50 volts. Looks good. 150. Yeah, yeah. Well, 200, I bet it doesn't open on 200. Well, it still does. Oh yeah. So uh, these two capacitors not as bad as the others and that's probably why the resistor is not all fried up underneath like it was above. Probably. If you're going to be scientific about everything, probably is as good as it gets. <laughs> Let's see. It's a little tangled up here. I spasmed and yanked off all this goodness here. So it was. It was what? I have to remind myself now. So black is the common one. Black. Black. Black is. Black is yellow. Black is yellow. Yes, black is yellow. Uh oh, I'm getting a message. Not enough space in my computer. Hard drive. Uh oh, so this is probably going to come to a sudden end uh, when my hard drive jams. Free up space. Okay, we can maybe have enough time to get this in here. What have I done? Here, put this over here. Concentrate. Don't lose your head. If you can keep your head when all those about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, that's the greatest poem ever written. You can keep your head. If you don't know that poem, hey, Google it. If you can keep your head on all those about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. Rudyard Kipling, fantastic poem. Fantastic. Read it to my boys. Okay, speakers on. Antenna in the ground connection for reasons I won't go into. Antenna. 
antennas available. I'll just leave it there. Just a piece of wire right now. Are we ready? How about plugging in some tubes that are missing? That might be a good idea too. Yeah, I think it's better. Going to work better with the tubes. Eh? I have found this to be the case in the past. Now, the next console, the other console, like I'm going to be working on the record player uh, probably this afternoon, uh, it comes with a fantastic amplifier in it. It's got a tube in it. It's got a 10-pin tube. I've never seen one before. Never seen a 10-pin tube. A 10-pin tube has nine pins with one right in the middle. I've never seen it before. These are among the very latest, very last tubes to be manufactured, to be designed and manufactured and put on the market. So that's coming. Hey, how about this big hole here? I gotta fill that with something. Let's fill it with this. exciting now everything's ready speakers antenna speakers let's flip them around here there he is kind of galloping in there it's on medium wave volumes turned down and I think we're ready to go here there, so you just don't and make the radio feel a little more normal if you look at it this way. What's that? Oh, that's a reflection. I thought there was a big scratch down the, the front of the panel. Okay. How many okays? Any more okays needed? Let's keep an eye on the dim lights. I made lots of significant changes right on the output transformer. Uh, boobing that up. Not a recommended thing not recommended to boot that up so I'm having another look at it verifying that short circuit that I kind of built into it is gone I'm looking underneath here too I left oh I left the wire tail sticking out I should have trimmed it away trim away and looks very good Good. All looks good. Okay. We're going to find out in a moment. That's why it's good to have dim, dim bulbs. Go with your dim brain. Here we go. Swing. Okay. So this came on fairly bright because the radio hasn't been on for a while and it's got no charge in the power supply. That's, that's my guess. So it takes a pretty good whack at first. That's a stupid statement because you can't charge the high voltage power supply till the rectifier tube. Oh, there is no rectifier tube. That's right. This has still got a, uh, uh, a solid state rectifier in it that I've got to deal with too. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Well, let's go full power. Turn it up. Whew. Gotta go a long ways up to get some sound out of it. Okay, let me check. Both speakers sound the same. Let's see if we can tune something in here. He's going to open up the floor. So the reason for the volume, low volume is uh, low signal. So the, the antenna system up here is not doing the trick. Yeah. This is showing you the radio is developing a pretty good ADC voltage in it. Now, this is just interference in my shot. 
very powerful carrier, not very much modulation, although it's... There's another one. This is fantastic, this eye. And we're probably just going to get noise, noise, noise from here. Maybe, maybe down here. So that, that sound, I believe, is... I believe this is the computer in the other end of my house, in my, uh, my office. Um, it's on, I left it on sleep. And I know when it's on sleep, it issues a very powerful uh, interference, just like this. And apparently, this is uh, the power supply supplying voltage or something to one of the memories to, to hold the memory up while the computer's in sleep mode. Something like that's going on. But this is really powerful. Reception a little limited, but uh, not bad. Let's try FM again. Oh, I gotta move the antenna. Oh, wrong tuner. Ooh. Wow. It's just got super bass coming out of it, man. I hope this sounds like this when it's on its regular speakers. It's weak signal. Pretty nice. Even on a weak signal. See, that's a weak signal too. Excellent. Okay, let's take a look for heat now in the uh, output transformer and stuff like that. The resistor I put in there. Let's have a look. Let's see what we can see. It's a game with this really cool. Hey. There we go. Move the camera back. I gotta move a whole bunch of other stuff back. Here. Basically a speaker. There we go. Now, I'm gonna watch the screen. I'm gonna watch what you're watching and maybe that'll help me do this in a way that makes sense. So what are we looking at? So obviously we're looking right at this tube here, obviously. I'm gonna raise this. It's at 35. I'm gonna raise this way up here. So what we're interested in, spotting anything that is, let's say, up around 60. So, even at 60. So, what, what, are, the, what are those two red things there? That. It's got to be that. And I can actually see, see, I can see the, uh, you know, so this is hot. This long resistor is hot. The one I put in is not. That's the tubes over there. Don't get a, sh don't get a shock here, Jim, doing this. So there's really no heat up on top here. Ah, there is something. But what I'm seeing is down, there's another high wattage resistor just down behind it I can see on there. So these parts are not getting hot at all. The transformer itself is, not it take a long time for the transformer to heat up. And while we're here, I'm just going to scan quickly down here and just see if there's... So I'm learning every time I use this that how to get more and more benefit out of it. Yeah, so see, so that resistor down there is uh, around, I can measure its temperature here, right there, about 40, 45 maybe, that's not so bad. 
Let's see, there's uh, the temperature difference between this tube and this tube is really, really apparent. Um, so there's another resistor I can see uh, back here, and it's also a high wattage resistor. You expect high wattage resistors to be a little warm. So nothing out of the sorts there. And what about down under here? So again, there's a high wattage resistor sitting right there, and that's what's showing up on the screen here, I think. You know, the tube base, the tube base is showing up. I mean, the heat is, is uh, it travels down through the metal pins, into the socket, through the socket, and into the bottom of the radio. So even looking up this way, you expect to see a fair bit of heat in a tube, especially these tubes. These tubes are... Well, how hot are they? Let's take a look. So I'm going to put the red right where the white plus is, and this white number then will tell us the temperature of that area. So I'm, I'm you know, 150. That's 150 there. Let's go up on the glass here. So th these readings are a little questionable because of a uh, thing called uh, emissivity which is a number that relates the temperature of something to the amount of energy it radiates because not everything radiates the same amount of energy at the same temperature. Shiny metal is particularly bad. Glass, I bet, is not much better. So we aim this thing at shiny metal and you're going to get a, a, an incorrect value. So this is really about relative stuff. Finding things to investigate more deeply. That kind of stuff. It's great. I like that. I know lots of fun with that thing. I got that. I got that from uh, Banggood. And there's a few different types of those. That one looks to me like a kind of something made for a hobbyist. Okay. So uh, last thing was to explore the uh, voltages on that first tube. So I'm gonna turn this this way. I want to explore again the voltages on this tube, so we're going to cut the power, get my tube extender. Because I have it in my head that there's a problem and there's not. And I've got both those things floating around in my head. And I think only one of them can be correct. Okay, flip it back on here. And let me put the uh, voltage table up on my screen. Provided I can find it. Voltage table, where are you? Oh, it's right on the schematic, of course. What am I talking about? And we wanted to check, in particular, uh, this tube, which is the detector tube. ECH81. Oh, for crying out loud. I have to turn it off and take it out to look at it. Huh. That's why I like that's why I like the rotating table. Okay, I'm actually gonna shut the set off. I'm gonna pull that tube out. And just I just wanna be sure of what I'm doing. ECH81. I got the right tube, so I just don't want to make a dumb mistake. Power back on. Oh, everybody hear that sound? That kind of sound? I have no idea. It seems to come out of this area of the radio. Don't really know what it is. Could be a transformer windings. Okay, on the ECH81, 
in AM mode, pin number 8 should have 90 volts on it. 90 volts on it, eh? This is a good ground spot. In fact, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this and this and this. Pull this out. I stick it in the ground terminal. Put it on my voltmeter lead. Stick with me, meter. Come on. Okay. Pin number eight. Nine, eight. What did I say it's supposed to be there? Not zero. We're on FM. On medium wave makes a difference on these okay so it's been about an hour since that last video clip came to a bit of a sudden ending because I let my hard drive get full on my video computer so I've had to copy off a pile of files and uh, wait for all that to be done before I can continue now I looked at the video the last thing I was doing was testing the uh, voltage on the plate of this tube I can tell you in fact, we're going to do it again. I'm going to pick up right from there. There's probably about three minutes of activity that actually got missed uh, because the video shut off quick. So let's let's get this guy going again. So I just realized I had this on FM. Uh, FM is going to change some of the voltages on some of the tubes here a little bit. And so we need to make sure it's on AM. There we are. Okay, and I believe I believe it was pin number eight, wasn't it? Was it pin number eight? Should have 90 volts on it. Okay, here we go. Pin number eight. Right there. There you go. 90 volts, just about exactly. Right. Now the next one we need to look at on there is uh, let me just look. I'm just looking at the schematic here. We want to look for uh, pin number six, 260 volts on pin number six. I'm stunned if it's not there. Nine eight seven six, 250 volts there. Perfect. And. You know, that's about it for checking this tube. So I think probably I made a mistake and had it on FM or something like that or did something silly. It made me think the uh, the uh, screen voltage was missing on it, but it's all there. Okay, so where does that leave us now? Uh, alignment, I think. So before doing the alignment, though, we should really listen to this radio and see how well it really works. Let's do that. Let me just, you know, I'm going to sort a few things out here and then we'll uh, carry on. Okay, judgment time on the radio, starting with the medium wave using only the loop antenna. That's full volume now. My, my impression is it's, it's bad alignment. That's my impression here. Let's stick an external antenna in. First, just a piece of wire here in my shop. Just this piece of wire here. Just a little piece of wire. You can watch the eye also. See it getting quieter and quieter as I go down this end? So to me that's an alignment problem where things are lined up here, but as you move down they begin to get out of alignment like that. 
got the greatest fingers in the world, man. It's amazing. So that's the story on AM. Alignment should save us. Let's put a stronger antenna on. I'll clip it on the uh, outdoor antenna here. I'll give it one more chance. Man, I tell you, reaching over the top of that radio, the heat coming up here is pretty significant. So already you can see you got more signal. Oh, there's my... I think my computer, look at that. Loads of signal coming in on this wire. But just a bunch of noise, really. Five ninety, right on five ninety. Excellent. Well, not excellent. Excellent in terms of wear, but the signal strength seems low. So I got the volume up quite high for that. Alignment's going to help, I'm pretty sure. Okay, next we'll try short wave. It's kind of a dumb time of day. I'm just skipping this uh, long wave thing. It's, it's not going to be there. Look at volume. Got to go up pretty high. Where are we frequency wise? So uh, 6, 7, 12. So maybe up in this area we might pick some stuff up. Wouldn't bet on it down here. Up around here. That's my computer going. Computer in another room in my house. They're getting louder as I tune up here. I guess it's the same thing again. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's getting, we're coming into alignment at the high end here. Uh, it's an assumption. But again, I think alignment's going to help with that. And then the last one is FM. Full blast. Oh, yeah, no antenna. Okay, let me put the antenna in the back. Here. Okay. Didn't this move last time? Fantastic. What's happening right in here? Tuning things going on there. Well, it's enough. Uh, wow, FM sound is fantastic coming out of this thing. So, wow, what more can I do to it now? Um, the alignment, both the AM shortwave and FM alignment, uh, I think is what's left to be done here. Great, okay. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, so tomorrow we'll get around to the alignment.